Morning Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. Rosanna, Michael, and Anita. Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning. So uh, it's a beautiful day here in the uh, Big Apple. Bright, sunny, cold day. Rosanna, <laughs> freezing out there. I had to wear two coats, and I like it. I'm so tired of summer. I was with Paul, please come. I couldn't wait. Have you got your booster yet, Rosanna? COVID? I don't qual I don't qualify. I got a Moderna shot. Ah, uh, you got so you are right. You don't even like, gotta worry about it. That's right. only you have Pfizer and uh J and J people who got it. Do J and J people gotta get it? I don't think so. I think only Pfizer. Oh, I got short change. I thought I was on front row. What about you, Anita? Did you get your booster? I, I did not. I'm also a Moderna, Moderna uh, recipient. Oh. So, uh, but I, I hope to get one before. Um, I mean, I, I was one of the earliest vaccinated, really. So I'm coming up to to eight months uh, since. So I hope to get get one soon. Eight months. Eight months. I, I'm eligible, but they ain't got them. They don't have them. They're not available. They say make an appointment. So you try to make an appointment. There's no. <laughs> place to make an appointment. They have a shortage because of the mandate. The mandate, the mandate's working. Everybody and their mother and father are getting uh, vaccinated, Michael, but they don't wanna lose their jobs, you know? Which well, they're thing. also they're also offering $100 to people here in New York who get vaccinated. And so that's getting a lot of the young people excited. Um, Cause you know, the commercials on TV are get vaccinated and get a hundred bucks. So they're all running out the doors to get vaccinated. Because that's a lot of allowance money. Allowance money. <laughs> I, I would hope that would be. Yeah, well, that's true. You're 14, 15, you still. I got like 50 cents for my allowance. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> gave me 100. These young people today, they're spoiled. I don't mean that. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's. Uh, so, um, but the African American and Latino uh, uh, vaccination rates have gone up significantly, which is great. I, I was writing, a, I'm writing an article, and I put down that only based on a poll I saw, actually, the 51 percent of Black folk were vaccinated. I was like, oh no, that's terrible. But then I saw another poll this morning that said. It was 70% for African Americans and Latinos. Maybe it was a little higher for Latinos. And that's great. It's kind of white, black, Latino, Asian. It's all about the same now. So um, the Biden administration's efforts to convince are working. And um, and that's a that's a that's a big thing. So um, Rosanna, but when they passed the federal mandate, the support of the administration dropped five, six points. People were, people were upset. Don't make me do something I don't want to do. But it's for the public good, right? I mean, I think that's something that we haven't learned completely is to think beyond ourselves. You know, we got to think about others. We're, we're taught to just think about what's in it for me, what's good for me, and I don't want to be controlled by the government without really fully thinking about, you know, the overall good that it's going to do and thinking about, you know, what's down the road, even, you know, for your own loved ones. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know uh, who may not have a loved one or somebody close to them that came down with the, with the virus, at least, if not yeah. lost someone. Here in California, we have uh, in, in, in the major busy areas of, of Los Angeles, at least um, on the corners where people can get vaccinated and they're just like pop-up tents. People can get vaccinated or tested. So, so I think that's also part of why uh, Black Latino uh, folks have been, uh, you know, the increase access easier access exactly yeah and they don't yeah, have to, they know they don't have to pay which is another big right. Fact. <clears throat> right no that's really important access and and the cost you know 
I think about it like I think about seat belts, you know? You wear your seat belt, everybody's required to do it because it keeps other people safe and it keeps you safe. Exactly. Or in car insurance, you can't drive if you're not insured. There's a mandate there. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it makes it, even though I don't like people telling me what to do. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't like, you know, I mean, I was in a, one country once and we were at an event and they had piped in music every morning into the room at six o'clock or 5.30 in the morning. Oh. Music would automatically turn on to wake you up. Oh, that made me so mad. <laughs> I wanted to rip the damn thing off the wall. <laughs> I'm not gonna say whether or not I did it, but it was just like, why are you forcing me to get up? I wanna sleep. I just got drunk last night. <laughs> anyway, enough about me. Uh, the the uh, negotiations, Anita in <laughs> Washington have stalled. No agreement. That's right. Bernie it's... Sanders and the what's the name of the congresswoman from uh, uh, Washington State said, "Hell no." Mm -hmm. Jayapal. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's I I I mean Mansion Joe Mansion and Kirsten Cinema seem to be. Um, undermining, sabotaging, you know, um, you know, well, what, what word to use, uh, the, the whole uh, Biden agenda. And it's, it's just really dangerous and, and, uh, and crazy. I, I think this is our, our chance. There was that video that, that was going around with the, the people on boats surrounding uh, Manchin's houseboat. Um, and one woman said, you know, we just can't wait. We can't wait for these kind of things. Uh, that are in the budget uh, uh, re reconciliation bill that will really ease um, women's uh, issues um, in particular. Um, and it would be wonderful for the people of West Virginia. The people of West Virginia desperately need uh, the, the policies that are um, proposed in that bill. Uh, Manchin could sell it to them if he, if he wanted to, um, but he doesn't seem motivated to do that. And Kirsten Sinema, former Green Party member, it seems to be under the um, influence of pharmaceutical companies who have donated uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to her campaign. And now she's beholden to them apparently uh, over what her own constituents want. So it seems, so it seems. Speaking of women's issues, there's gonna be a big women's march tomorrow, DC, New York, Columbus, LA, all over the country be there, be square. I hope that they go down, you need to take that march to Manson's houseboat, uh, you know, and uh, <laughs> wade in the water, you know, get in there with them and, 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 and you know, really put the pressure to bear. I thought that was some creative tactics. They got people in boats, you know. <laughs> uh, Michael, you gonna march tomorrow? I am. I'm excited. And I'm feeling, um, I guess, kind of motivated uh, by hearing people like uh, Jaya Powell and um, Cori Bush and uh, Barbara Lee give their testimonies in Congress this past week about their experience um, with abortion, you know, and how it was a very difficult decision, but it was their decision, you know. I'm sure that was really hard for them to get up in front of the whole country in front of Congress and do that. Um, and, and again, you know, going back to with the march going on and this, these bills trying to get passed through Congress, people need to understand that this isn't some radical, I mean, it's, there's elements of these bills that are very progressive, of course, but Biden was elected as like the centrist moderate um, alternative to people like Bernie and even Warren. And so, you know, he's been compared to people like, uh, you know, presidents like FDR, Roosevelt and LBJ. Johnson. And I think those are fair comparisons because they both did great, you know, domestic policies that were very progressive, but they're all, they were also known for, you know, an FDR's case, um, you know, shipping off Japanese Americans to internment camps and an L L LBJ's uh, case, you know, heightening the, the war in Vietnam and so forth. And so that's kind of the same thing we're seeing with, with Biden. Of course, he's not so great on foreign policy and um, immigration. He has to be critiqued there. But the fact that, you know, these senators, as Anita was saying, Cinema and Manchin won't even pass these uh, bills that 
people in Arizona and West Virginia and their constituencies really need. I mean, they're basically saying, oh, people in West Virginia don't need childcare. People in Arizona don't need healthcare expanded. It's just ridiculous. And so, you know, there's nothing um, super radical and crazy about this president that's, uh, that's trying to get it passed. It's, you know, I believe 64% of the uh, American population are in favor of, of, of the Build Back uh, Better plan. And so, of course, the Progressive uh, Caucus in Congress is all for it, and they're and they're they're backing it, which is no surprise. But you know, it's the president's agenda, the center's president's agenda. And so, anyone who's not supporting it, you know, it's just it's ridiculous at this point, uncalled for. Let's talk about this a little bit. Is this the president's agenda, or is it the people's agenda, or is it both? I mean, you know, there was a there was a battle of ideas and a battle of, of positions during the presidential campaign, you know, and uh, Trump was saying America first and uh, down with the TPP, down with NAFTA, workers first, we're the party of the workers and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, oh no, no, hold up. We're not gonna let you claim that mantle. We're not for TPP either, we're not for NAFTA, we're for working people and not just White ones, both for black and Latino and Native American and Asian and and uh, oh by the way you got a free tuition we got to have a path to citizenship, Michael, and and uh, and 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 the Democratic Party platform was was shifted in twenty even when Mrs. Clinton was running, so is it still Biden's agenda or is it? the people's agenda that Biden adopted? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, <laughs> I mean, of course, the, the, the narrative has changed, of course. People really have pushed the platform over to, um, I guess, towards the left, you could say. But you can also say the circumstances, the circumstance, you know, COVID, um, the Trump presidency and so forth. And but it is, you know, the Build Back Better plan. He, he, he has said since the beginning, you know, put it on my desk and I'll sign it. So I'm not going to take that away from him, you know, despite our differences with him ideologically and so forth. But, you know, again, I, I just want to reiterate, there is nothing um, super radical or, or, or revolutionary or left about this plan, but it has to be passed, you know, that because, again, almost 70 percent of the American population is in favor of it and they need it and they're still unemployed and they still can't pay rent and they still, you know, are, make, are struggling to make um, ends meet. And so it just it has to be passed. They can't. Uh, it, it would be a shame to have it cut. I'm reading this book. Y'all see it? Pearl. And in this book, this is the book about this bestseller about Trump and Biden and the whole coup and everything. McConnell says, Biden is no centrist. McConnell, Mitch McConnell, the right winger, he says he's not. I don't know what he considers to be the political center, <laughs> you know, because it's a little bit of a moving target, Rosanna. But I thought that was interesting that, you know, they're, they have a different opinion of, uh, he's a nice guy, he's an A-plus guy. But then on the next page, they said that Biden was negotiating with the Democrats and some of the Republicans, he had on a pair of uh, socks, and the socks had a little uh, emblem emblazed on them. Blue dogs. <laughs> yeah, blue dogs, Rosanna, emblazing on, on his side. Was he trying to send a, a symbol to a message that he was at heart a, uh, a, a, a blue dog? I don't know what he is. I, th I think we, uh, you know, I think that that it is what we have to do is look at the entire picture, you know, the objective reality that, you know, people felt that Biden can can uh, provide what they were asking for, what they've demanded on the streets. And, and he's that's why he why that's why people elected him, because they thought that he could do that. Um, and, and push for that and continue to push for that. And I think the other thing is that, you know, um, there's that ideological battle of, of who is who and, you know, what is what. But I think if we stay focused on what the working people need 
and push for that. Let's not get derailed, you know, in, in even identifying him, but, but looking at, we know that we can push him into something. We know that we can provide the forces. We have, we have, um, we have the power to do this. We just have to organize ourselves and get out there and demand it. We've seen it in, in this, you know, election. So I think we, we just have to get out there. And, and I think the demonstration tomorrow should be part of that, that show of, of, of uh, uh, um, push to, to pass this Build Back Better uh, bill and, and, and move in that direction and continue to move that. So I really encourage everybody to go out there tomorrow. I agree. Uh, be there, put on your shirt, put on your marching shoes and stand for something because one of the big problems is that there's not enough street heat. There's not enough street, fall is here. We need street heat. I was reading that Mrs. Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, the senator from the, what's her position? She's the uh, Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House. Don't be disrespected, Nancy Pelosi. She's the Speaker of the House, y'all. And she uh, was pushing labor unions to write to the senator saying, pass this infrastructure bill, write them, write letters. You got to do more than write letters. You got to be out there as, 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 because it's a very complicated situation. For example, Anita, the Senate and House are poised to pass the biggest military budget in history. And um, 46, and they added a, a bipartisan group of Democrats and Republicans, $46 billion to the amount that Biden asked for originally. And the Democratic caucus in the House split in half. <laughs> hmm. But it was passed because the majority of Republicans, and who's it directed against? I gave you three guesses. Anita? Who, who is who is it, it directed against? Uh, the military a budget? Yeah. Uh, China? I guess. China, there you go. Of course, yes. Yeah, what happened, I remember this whole this whole situation where the, they're getting actually more money uh, than uh, the Biden administration asked for is really one of the clearest areas where you can see the influence of big corporations, the big defense contractors, and how much power they have. And uh, John Bactel has a good article in the PW about the military budget and how it was, I mean, we've spent $21 trillion since 9-11. Uh, um, and, uh, and really what happened now, now the war, the forever war in Afghanistan is over. Um, I remember the, the, the phrase from the early 90s, the peace dividend, which we never seem to, uh, never seem to accrue uh, to people's need, to solving peace, people's needs in the 90s, but it also, where is our, our current peace dividend now that we're not spending that money in, in Afghanistan? It seems like, well, it doesn't matter that we're, we're not at war. We're still feeding the, uh, the military contractors who have such enormous power over Congress, um, at seemingly both parties. One of the main tenets of Marxism, Michael, is that there is uh, a thing inherent in the process of production that pushes uh, society uh, in uh, a way independent of our will. Independent, whether you like it or not, there's a, there's a process of profit making and production that in the military financial industrial complex is part of that. It's like a huge part of the economy. And even if you wanna change it, it's like, you know, you're wrestling with this huge, you know, complex of corporations and and money and influence and corruption and and jobs and jobs and and it's really difficult to, you know, grab a hold to it. So sometimes even if you want to do something, you're constrained by objective reality that uh, that uh, kind of pushes you in the opposite direction. 
And that's a bitch, man. That's that's really hard to hard to grab a hold to. But but the well, good news but the good news around that is I believe it was like last week or two weeks ago there was a vote to defund the military and it failed. You know, it didn't pass. But my understanding is that um, more Democrats voted to defund than ever before. You know, so it's mm. it's becoming more and more popular. And so, you know, under capitalism, you know, imperialism, living in the imperial core, as they said, you know, all we can really do is keep pushing to build a peace movement, uh, anti-war movement, anti-imperialist movement, whatever. But also, you know, there's these like there's this movement here in New York City called the Move the Money campaign, where you uh, work to uh, get the money for military spending and put it into like social programs and things that people need you know, because we can all live our lives and, and be comfortable without, ha you know, invading Afghanistan and having this, you know, new submarine war with China over in the in the uh, Pacific Ocean and the uh, China Sea. And so I think, you know, that we have to get people to think about that and care about that, just as we did when, um, uh, when George Floyd um, was shot, you know, that was a huge outcry by the American people saying no more, no more. And so we really have to do whatever we can uh, to have people look at these inhumane sanctions that are on countries like Venezuela, Cuba, China, there's sanctions on China, Zimbabwe, Burundi, Syria, Iran, countries that you don't always think of because they don't have quote unquote socialist governments. And we have to get people to care about that because we're in the middle of a global pandemic still and people are suffering. They don't, they don't have access to syringes and in vaccines and so forth. And there's people here who are refusing vaccines. Ah, I don't want it. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in the virus. You know, Jesus will protect me or whatever. And there's people who would die for a vaccine in some of these countries. You know, they're literally dying for it. And so, but these sanctions are preventing it from happening. And so we have to raise people's awareness around that um, and avoid another, uh, to avoid another Cold War. It's very important. They can spend $10 trillion on the military over 10 years, but you try to spend what is it, three trillion for social programs, for vaccines and needles and jobs and health care and food and kindergarten and, you know, um, uh, immigration, path to citizenship, you know, Haitians, Hondurans, and under bridges in Texas, and you, you can't, you got to ship them back to a, country Rosanna with no water, running water, earthquakes, you know, ridden and coups taking place every day. And, and uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, I'm tired of it. That's why we're in the Communist Party. How's the recruiting campaign coming, Rosanna? We're going to have to end on that note today. It's going well, it's going well. We're, uh, like I had mentioned last last year, I mean last week, we have a new club, but we have uh, another club forming in Alaska, and uh, I'm getting updates from different clubs, such as in Kentucky and Oklahoma and places like that. And um, so comrades are focusing, and uh, you know, I I really like the meme that says, "Have you ever been called a communist?" If you have, it's time to join. Join up tomorrow when we go out to the march, mm -hmm. bring your cards, y'all. Sign people up, now's the time. We need a bigger, bigger, better, stronger communist party to fight, to fight that the Democrats won't fight. Some of them will, but we need, but some of them won't. And we gotta be there with those who won't on behalf of those who need. Take care, stay strong, stay safe, stay in the fight. We'll see you at the march. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.